Hello, it's Yvonne, and welcome to Having You On. It's time for another edition of In the Crib, and today's topic is dealing with loss. From time to time, I do a segment on my channel called In the Crib, where I talk about certain topics. And the reason I'm talking about this in this particular time is recently I've been dealing with a great deal of loss within my family and with the pandemic has put a new stressor on anyone that might be dealing with loss. And so I thought I would share some of my insights, some of my experiences, and perhaps it might help you. You're looking at my reborn doll toddler, Julie. It's a doll channel, so I have dolls. I want to continue talking about loss and dealing with loss. Years ago, back in the days of high school, there was these elective courses I took that I wanted to prepare myself for being an adult. And I knew that these things would pop up and I knew I wanted to be prepared, a little bit more prepared than just not knowing at all. And of course there's home economics and there's personal finance and those sort of things that you need as an adult. They're not something to look forward to, but it's something you would have to do and deal with every day of your adulthood. There was also a course called Thanatology, which is the study of death and dying. And I knew eventually someone around me was going to pass away and that I was going to have to deal with those emotions, deal with uh, how to handle their passing. There's a course, a whole psychology that has to deal with bereavement and grief. And those are very, very real emotions and everybody goes through them. And it's very important that you are aware that there is help for you. Uh, there is different experts on this topic of psychiatrists, bereavement counselors, and they may bring up these terms. I'm sure you're aware of them about the different phases that you go through when you experience loss. However, by categorizing them, it leads you to a point where you might fail. What I mean is if you're not going through all the little phases, you think to yourself, have I failed at my mourning? Have I failed at grief? Have I failed the person that has passed? No, you have not. You have not. Not everyone goes through those phases. Not at all. What my experience has been is it depends what I think. These are my words. What I think it depends on the relationship you had with the person that you have lost. Of course, with that relationship that you've had with a person that has passed, you'll have a different type of grieving depending on the type of relationship you had with that person. If you had a healthy bond with that person, if you were close seeing each other on a daily basis or that you would see them at family gatherings and you were very close to them, perhaps you talked to them on the phone often, and especially during this pandemic, there's been an extra strain where you feel completely distant from a person and to have them uh, pass away at this time is even more difficult because you can't be with that person. You can't, the hospice won't allow it, hospice won't allow it. You just can't be with the person. And it makes it especially hard to know that they're terminally ill and that they are going to be passing. To say your last goodbyes, to have your closure, to know that you were there, to be with the person as they pass, they may not be happening during this pandemic. It puts such limits on the grief that you may uh, need to process. I would like to share with you some of my personal dealings with loss within my immediate family. A few years ago, my eldest sister uh, passed. She passed away of lung cancer before she was diagnosed with lung cancer. We would spend about once a week, get together and kind of catch up with each other. And I really look forward to seeing her and, and talking with her. And then she decided that she was going to move to a different state because I have another sister in another state. So she wanted to be closer to that sister so she'd get a chance to catch up with her as well to get to see her in person. And they're closer in age than my eldest sister is with me. There's quite a, there's a huge gap 
of our ages. She's the, she was the eldest sister, um, but she passed away from lung cancer. Um, and uh, sadly, she didn't get very much notice and she didn't have very much time and um, finding out that she had cancer and then immediately she, she passed. I'm not saying that if you have cancer, I know there's lots of people in the community that have cancer. I'm not saying that once you find out you're going to pass, no, take all the aggressive treatments as you possibly can and you'll get through it. But hers, um, unfortunately, she found out way too late. And uh, shortly after that, exactly five months later, I lost my middle sister through a um, horrific car accident and uh, even in a different state because she had also moved after my other sister had passed she moved to another state and in that state that she got in a horrible accident and was killed so uh, that's two losses within a short period of time and then i lost my mom my mom uh, passed away of breast cancer and then six months later my father passed away from congestive heart failure. So that's a lot of losses all at once. Each loss was different because I had a different type of relationship with each person and I experienced different types of loss. With my eldest sister, I was quite close. I would see her often and then, you know, she moved away and then I didn't see her and then shortly she passed. And then with my middle sister, I rarely saw her. And so it was a different type of loss. I still grieved that she was no longer going to be there. And it was especially hard when I would uh, see her daughter and, and I hear her daughter's laugh and I would start to cry because that was my, that was my sister's laugh. My, she had the same laugh as my sister. And it was in those moments that I would feel uh, the most grief of the loss of that sister when I knew I would never hear her voice again. I would never be around her, but her, her children are alive. And it's, I can still hear little bits of, of her voice within her daughter and her other daughter as well. And the loss is still there, but it's like the person is still around because their, their offspring are here. I don't know. It's a different type of loss versus my eldest sister. It, uh, there's no one like her and I miss her very much. And then there was the loss of my mom. Of course, everyone loves their mom and it's great loss there. Um, but when someone passes, you'll never have any more moments with them. You'll never have any more conversations with them. And it makes it hard when you may wish that you had said something that you wish that you should have or could have had said and you can't. Those are the losses that I experienced in a short amount of time within each other. Just a matter of months, I lost one and then I lost some more. It was very, very hard. But what happened recently doesn't have to do with the loss of a um, relative. It has to do with the loss of a pet. Uh, we recently had lost, I don't wanna cry. We have recently lost our uh, lab. You may have seen it on Instagram. I was sharing with you how he was with me upon my recovery of surgery. He wouldn't leave my side. He was a big comfort. Um, a couple of weeks ago, he started showing signs that he was not doing well at all. And uh, neurological issues and other issues were happening with him. It was very upsetting because we knew that was, that was it, that he wasn't going to get better. No matter what medication we gave our our dog, he wasn't going to get better. One made it really hard. Again, we're going to go into the relationship. I know it's a different type of loss when you have to deal with the loss of a person, but the loss of a, a close um, pet that brought you, it's more than a pet. It's really a family member that has brought you comfort when you had no one to turn to with those emotions at that time. And at three o'clock in the morning, you have that, that that friend right there for you and there and it's go always going to be there for you but recently losing um our lab has been especially hard because then we got to see the reality of having to deal with this pandemic at the same time as dealing with loss is that you couldn't be you know i had been with um other uh pets that i've had in the past where i had it i was able to be there 
when they they were passing and this time I couldn't and it was especially hard um, having to say your goodbyes and really quickly and then not being with your friend that had always been there for you and you can't be there for them to pass and it's especially hard and I know what there are people in this world right now that are dealing with this pandemic and dealing with or perhaps the person is passing for other reasons it's really hard you can't be with a person and I know that it's going to be very hard but reach out to bereavement counselors reach out to psychiatrists um, for help if you need to and that you know that you're not alone I know we get so sick of hearing that <laughs> that everybody's going through this pandemic together but different people are going through it different ways you can clearly see that um, but it was especially hard losing our uh, family member he was I, I was very attached to um, our lab he was very much like I know we <laughs> compare him to a human he was very much like my forever toddler and he was funny and kind and sweet and loving and it made it especially hard so I wanted to share with you uh, what has been going on and I know that it's a hard time and I know that other people are going through a hard time as well um, I just want you to know be strong hang in there and allow yourself to go through the grief process and if someone steps in that you may know that doesn't like how you're acting um, about someone's passing or, or something else everybody goes through grief different you don't have to be judged at that time especially and I want to thank you so much for stopping by I know this is a, a really tough topic to talk about but it was important for me to share some of my experiences and perhaps it will help you knowing that you don't have to go through those phases and if you don't go through all of them you know that you're not failing and that everybody has different relationships with different people that may have passed and I just wanted to thank you so much for hanging in there and and being patient with me and while I'm dealing with surgery my husband's dealing with surgery all everything let's have everything all at once and I just wanted to share with what's going on and I thank you very much for stopping by the Reborn Feel Good channel sometimes. <laughs>